Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to our Good Friday communion service. Uh, it's special for me that we are joining together and we are remembering the price paid by Christ on the cross for our sins. This uh, Passion Week has been a really different one, hasn't it? Because we're all hunkered down in our houses and God has put the whole world in a time out uh, that we might seek him. And so let's do that tonight. If there's any distractions going on in the home, let's quiet everything. And let's just put our hearts and our minds on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's focus in on him. Uh, let's start out with a worship song. And then we're going to have a special devotion. Um, we have another special worship song and then communion. How does that sound? Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore. Spent with you. Come on, join me. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful to me King of all days who oh, so highly exalted glorious in heaven above humbly you came to the earth you created all for love's sake you came to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me Amen much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship. Here I am to here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. <laughs> Lord, thank you for drawing us together. And thank you for allowing us to share this time with you. I thank you, Father, for putting us in a position where we have church without walls. Because we're all together in unity, in spirit and in truth, Lord, which is what the Father's looking for. So, Lord, forgive us of our sins and uh, help us to focus in on you. And let this be a special time between us and you. For we ask this in Jesus' precious name, and everyone says, Amen. This week, uh, we had planned to do a special teaching time 
uh, for the young adults. And uh, Daniel was able to record and send over to me a devotional for them. And as I listened to it, I was so blessed by it that I thought how perfect it would be uh, to share this devotional right before we have communion together. So uh, without further ado, here's Daniel. Hello, everybody. This um, upcoming Friday is Good Friday. And uh, Pastor Paul and Pastor Aileen uh, asked me to share a little bit of a word about Good Friday. So let's get into it. Um, but before we get into it, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your provision, Lord. I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you protect us, Lord. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross for us, Lord, to forgive us of our sins. Holy Spirit, I pray that you fill me as we share this word. In your name we pray, amen. So, um, Good Friday, what does Good Friday mean to us as Christians? As Christians, uh, we celebrate Good Friday because it's the day that we celebrate Jesus dying on the cross, right? It's a very, very important part of our faith. Um, and it relates even to today. Even though it happened 2,000 years ago, it's relatable to today. Um, the circumstances in our world are, are pretty difficult to understand. Um, and if we're not careful, we can get caught up in worry and things can start to seem very dark and scary. Um, but they're not as dark and as scary as the reality that we face without Jesus. Now, before Jesus died on the cross, there was only one way to temporarily cover sins, and that was by the blood of an animal sacrifice on the altar. Um, but because Jesus died for us, he paid the price for us eternally. And because of that, we can approach the throne of God in boldness and in confidence. So I'm going to read this section of scripture. I'm going to talk about Jesus a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, let's get into it. So I'm going to come out of John 19. And I'm going to start in verse 17. So John 19, 17. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, eat to each soldier a part, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from top in one piece. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it. Who shall it be? That the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did choose these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took his, her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Jesus right there, he says, it is finished. Well, what is finished? What is finished is his eternal purpose. Jesus, from before the foundation of the world was laid, was slain for your sins and for my sins. 
His blood covers us. Isaiah 53, 5 says that he was wounded for our transgressions, that he was bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. When you really stop to think about Jesus and who he is and what he did, you surely have to be amazed. God stepped down from his throne in heaven, put on the flesh of a man, lived among us, dealt with every kind of suffering we dealt with, sickness, disease, fear, pain, suffering, all these different things Jesus endured. And while he lived among us, he did not sin. He taught us how to live, how to honor God, and ultimately, he went to the cross and died for us. And his cross, his death on the cross, is the fulfillment of many, many Old Testament prophecies. If you'd like to check it out, check out Psalm 22. Psalm 22 is written almost everything word for word, the description of the cross. And that was 1,000 years before Jesus stepped foot on the earth, before he was born, before he was crucified. The Old Testament proves it. Jesus died for our sins so that we can enter the kingdom of heaven for him, with him, excuse me. One day, one day all these things are going to be over. John talks about it here in Revelation 21. The hope of our faith in Jesus Christ. John says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from, the eye, from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Jesus died so that we can inherit those blessings. Now, for any of you guys that are watching that necessarily haven't accepted Jesus, now is as good of a time as any. Plagues are gonna hit the earth. Poverty is gonna hit the earth. Death of the body is going to come. But our faith in Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross rescues us from that so that we can inherit eternal life with him. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Jesus, we adore you. We thank you for coming down from heaven and living among us. We thank you that your blood covers our sins, Lord, and we receive you to be Lord of our lives today, Lord God Almighty. Forgive us of our sins, that way we can spend eternity with you. We love you and we praise you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Happy Good Friday, everybody. Love you guys. Be blessed. Lovely. Thank you so much, brother. I hope that you all enjoyed that. I hope that it all has set your heart right before the Lord at this time. Um, let's prepare our hearts now for communion, shall we? If you don't have, well, if you don't have the little cup and the grape juice and the bread or the uh, cracker, don't worry about it. Just uh, even just grab a little bit of water or whatever crust of bread you may have. Um, it is just something that is symbolic of the Lord, yes, but more than that is the condition of our hearts. That's what it is that the Lord sees. So David, you have a special song for us. Why don't you go ahead and bring that and we'll prepare ourselves for communion right now.
My debt is paid Because of your blood My sins are washed away It is a very sober and somber thing to think of what Christ went through uh, on what we call Good Friday. Now, I know that there are a lot of folks that, that uh, try to explain to us why it's called Good Friday, since it seems so dark and tragic. And uh, a lot of people have a lot of different ideas. Uh, one of them is that uh, uh, good at one time meant holy so it was like saying holy friday that that makes sense but uh for me to say good friday means that if not for this friday that we commemorate no good at all would come the whole world would be left in sin there would be no salvation there would be no free gift of eternal life so for me, when you say Good Friday, it means it makes everything good or all possible good comes from this Good Friday. Goodness for us because our sins are forgiven by faith in Christ. And so I like the title Good Friday. Uh, the Lord does work all things together for the good. And of course, we know that this leads to Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. And so I hope you'll all join us for that service at 4 p.m. on uh, Easter Sunday. But for now, let's consider communion, shall we? So at the Passover meal, Jesus, at the end of the meal, he took up uh, bread and For me, I, I like to consider the great love of Jesus that night. He washed the disciples' feet. He taught them. He gave them the new commandment, uh, which is to love one another even as he's loved us. And that commandment to love each other would be the hallmark of a believer. And so, oh, how we need the Lord's help. And the Lord the Lord's peace and the Lord's mercy and his grace for us to portray that kind of love. But he was in a room where everyone there would leave him. Judas would betray him. They would all scatter. And he knew that. And yet he spoke to them with such love. He held up that bread and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. I don't think they got it, his meaning at that time, but they certainly did later. This is my body, which is broken for you. Another place in the Gospel of John, we're told that Jesus says, I am the door. The door meaning the way you pass through to get to the Father, to get to heaven, to have your sins forgiven. And so, in a sense, the bread being broken is our passage, our passage to the Father. In the Gospel of John, Jesus also said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Now, communion is not just a looking back at what Christ did, but it's also a looking forward. And what we're looking forward to to is that time when we're together with Christ and he again has communion with us. Won't that be wonderful? So he lifted up the bread and he broke it and so you can break that little wafer in half if you'd like and go ahead and partake of that bread. Lord, we thank you that you become our way to the Father. We thank you that we're forgiven, 
We thank you that by your stripes we're healed. We thank you, Lord God, that this is just a little bit of what we will experience in great measure once we're in your presence. He also lifted up the cup. He said, this is my blood. It's the blood of the new covenant. Covenant is like an agreement. It's like a contract. It's like, I don't mean to be too slang, but it's like Jesus saying, here's the deal that I'm making with you. And the deal that he makes with you and with me and with us is that if we will give him our confession of sin, then by his blood our sins are taken away. Isn't that wonderful? I can't pay for my own sins. You can't pay for your own sins. But Christ, who is perfect and led a sinless life, gave his life for us so that our sins would be not just forgiven. The Bible says taken away, remembered no more. Oh, Lord, thank you for that. And so he lifted up and he said, this is the deal. It was like the contract signed in his blood. And so you can go ahead and partake of that right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for forgiveness of sins. And I ask right now, Father, that everyone listening and everyone seeing this would take that opportunity to turn their hearts fully towards you. As you turned your heart fully towards us and bled and died on a cross for us to give us a freedom of access to the Father anytime, 24-7, day or night, you can call out on the Lord. God loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his son. Receive him as your Savior. Receive him as your Lord. Tell him, Father, here's my sin. And I believe, Jesus, you died for my sin. So I give to you now my life. And I will follow you all the days of my life. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give to you his peace. Keep, turn your eyes upon Jesus at this time. You're loved. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. I'll see you on Easter.